Real quick guys, there is still a few days left to get the Frag Out t-shirt. If you're a video game fan, specifically an FPS fan, you definitely don't want to miss it. Link is in the description. Tweet at me if you do order one so I can reply back to you guys. Sometimes a game is in development and it starts missing deadlines and stretching its release date further and further back. We've all seen this happen. This date has become known as development hell and a few games actually make it out of there once they're in and most of the time they suck if they ever do actually come out what's up guys jimmy or chaos welcome to chaos top tens and today we are going to be counting down the top 10 games that were stuck in development hell and absolutely sucked when they came out now if you guys want to see the opposite version of this we can also go over the top 10 games stuck in development hell that ended up being amazing drop a like on the video let me know in the comment section and before we get started we are running a $200 Amazon gift card giveaway the entire month of August. All you have to do to enter is like this video, be subscribed, turn on your notifications, and leave a comment why you want to win it with your Twitter handle attached. I will announce the winner at the end of the month on Twitter. So take advantage of that giveaway and let's go. At number 10, we have Stalker Shadow of Chernobyl. Does anybody remember this game? Stalker was a first-person horror adventure game in the same vein as Fear, but not nearly as good. It was developed by GSC Game World, and it started, they, well, they started work on it all the way back in 2001. However, after countless delays and pushbacks, the final product wasn't actually released to the public until March of 2007. Close to six years, it was stuck. In development hell the game isn't horrible and it's actually gotten decent reviews at release but going back and playing it today it doesn't really hold up at all there are so many bugs in the game that it becomes a hindrance to the actual experience and the game itself isn't really that good it's a little puzzling how a game can be in development for so long and still be so buggy however the game since has become a paradise for models who have made some pretty awesome new games out of its assets so at least it worked out for some people at number nine, we have Star Trek Online. If you are a Star Trek fan, chances are you're a little jealous of Star Wars The Old Republic and you wanted your own MMORPG equivalent in the final frontier. Well, online may not be the answer to your desires. <laughs> Work on this MMORPG started in 2004 by a studio called Perpetual Entertainment. The studio went bankrupt in 2008, at which point the game was transferred over to cryptic studios who would finish it up but even then there is a ton of trouble during the production there was a lot of debate over whether or not cryptic would charge a subscription fee for console players as the company feared no one would want to pay for their consoles online subscription on top of the regular star trek subscription finally released in 2010 after six years of development online got mainly negative reviews thanks to the bad voice acting shallow gameplay and repetitive missions despite having some pretty cool visuals the game has gotten better with time and updates but it's still not as good as it could have been you probably don't remember this game at number eight we have spore it was supposed to be a new kind of sims game as you got to play god to a bunch of bizarre new creatures work on this ambitious new project started back in 2000 by maxis known for their work on the sims and the sim city franchises it was released in 2008 after yes eight years of development hell to reviews from critics and gamers that liked the basic concept of the game but they actually criticized the actual gameplay which was incredibly basic and not very interesting as well as many features advertised early in the game development cycle did not actually make it to the final product we've heard that before criticism was also directed towards the digital management of the software which led to a very subpar user security this number seven entry we've talked about a few times on uh, top 10 videos on this channel, Daikatana or Daikatana, and it was an ambitious project from John Romero, one of the masterminds behind Wolfenstein 3D and the original Doom. After gaining the reputation as one of the true pioneers of the FPS genre, Romero must have let it all go to his head as he started working on a new project titled Daikatana that was supposed to transform the FPS genre once again. He was incredibly confident in this game, despite its constant delays and, delays and setbacks, and development started in 97 and initially went very quickly, as there was even a showing of the project at E3 that year, and it wasn't, well, it wasn't that impressive, but they were showing it, and work on the title continued as Romero added more and more new elements to it. But when it finally came out, three years later in the year 2000, it was a complete 
disaster. Many of Romero's initial promises were dropped and replaced with lame graphics and some of the worst AI and level design in gaming history. Decatana is one of the biggest financial failures in the history of the gaming industry, and John Romero actually apologized for how much he hyped the game, and he acknowledged it wasn't nearly as good as he had promised. But everybody already still spent their money, so what good is that? At number six, we have Dark Fall Online, and this is a game you may have not heard of. Dark Fall was an MMORPG released back in 2009, but it was shut down just three years later in 2012. Developed by Avicherine SA, work on the game started all the way back in 2001, although the earliest work was done by Razorwax, a team of only five people. Eventually, Razorwax was absorbed into the new Aventurine, who would finish up the game over the next eight years. Almost a decade, people. The game wasn't received well at all, as the game also felt very unfinished due to bugs and a lack of features advertised before release. The game also had a heavy emphasis on grinding and not the fun kind. Due to poor reception and a lack of players, the game was shut down in 2012, although there was another game in the series called Darkfall Rise of Aegon, released in May of 2017, and supposedly a new game is also in development. So hopefully they learn from their past mistakes and they give us something good. At number five, we have a game that was supposed to compete with the games like Grand Theft Auto and Saints Row, but in a more of an MMO style setting. We have APB, All Points Bulletin. The game was a decent idea as the players asked at the beginning if they want to be part of the enforcers or the criminals and the two teams are constantly at war with each other in a modern day city setting. So it was like GTA Online but with the addition of team police instead of just criminals. Production started back in 2005 but according to the developers there were plans to start on it for years and years before even that with Colin McDonald, executive of Real Time Worlds, calling it the bastard child of everything we've been striving towards for the last 15 or 20 years. So, you may ask, Jimmy, was it any good? No, it wasn't. It was finally released in 2010 and landed somewhere around the 55 to 60% with most reviewers as the game did not feel like it was finished. The publishers were also not very well received by gamers as they had a very controversial review embargo preventing critics or gamers from sharing their opinions on the games until well after release, which is just, that's just BS if you ask me. Clearly, an attempt to keep the inevitable bad reviews from keeping people from buying the game, and this led to plenty of backlash with the game. This number four title was stuck in development hell for over 10 years. Two Human. It isn't remembered for its development cycle, though. It's rather for its incredibly unprofessional developers for reasons that I'll get into in a second. Work on Two Humans started in 99 by Silicon Knights as an action RPG for the PS1. Then, Silicon Knights partnered with Nintendo and development shift over to GameCube. Although, the Two Human project took a backseat so the team could focus on Metal Gear Solid, The Twin Snakes, and Eternal Darkness, which would go on to be two gaming masterpieces. In 2005, Silicon Knights moved over to Microsoft and Two Human was to be an Xbox 360 exclusive trilogy. Set for a 2006 holiday release, it wasn't ready yet, so it was delayed once again. And when it finally came out in 2008, they didn't like it at all. The game runs on the Unreal Engine, which is developed by Epic Games, which most of you guys probably know as the developers of Gears of War. Well, at E3 2005, the first Gears of War was shown off, and it scared the crap out of Silicon Knights, who decided to try to sue Epic Games for putting too much into Gears of War, as opposed to the Unreal Engine. It's just, if you want to see the lawsuit, I put up a top 10 about the craziest video game lawsuits, and this was one of them. It, it, long story short, they didn't win the lawsuit, and it ended up failing. Here's a classic for you guys, Ride to Hell Retribution. This game came out a few years ago and got a ton of attention due to how bad it was. Originally advertised as an open world biker game where you got to rise the ranks of a tough biker dude, what we ended up getting was this horrific, linear, and ugly biker themed adventure game. It was bad. Work on Ride to Hell started back in 2008, but it was canceled. After being revived from the dead, work on the Ride to Hell Retribution continued until its release in 2013. But honestly, this thing should have stayed canceled. If this game never came out, I don't think anyone would have complained at all. Ever want to be or ever want to play a horrible action game with the most unsettling sex scenes and worst voice acting in gaming history? My friends, look no further than Ride to Hell Retribution. At number two, we have Aliens Colonial Marines. This has also made a lot of top tens, not the positive ones. Tons of controversy surrounded the game after release due to development seemingly going backwards after its initial reveal. What do you mean by that, you may ask? Well, when they showed it off, 
It looked great. It had smart AI, awesome lighting, a terrifying xenomorph enemy. However, when the game was actually released in 2013, it wasn't the same game. Some reports state that Gearbox have been taking more talented developers off the project to work on Borderlands, while other reports state that much of the work was outsourced altogether and that Gearbox barely even touched the game during development. Whatever the reason was, the official Aliens Colonial Marines is a terrible game and it sucks because what we saw in that initial offering could have been amazing. Okay, this is a gimme at number one. Everybody is going to be able to guess this one. I know you are. Duke Nukem Forever, and it had to be here. Infamously in development for over 15 years. Work on Duke Nukem Forever started in 96 as a sequel to Duke Nukem 3D. Development shifted from the studio to another studio to another studio, which partly explains its confused gameplay and overall lack of polish as it was in a 15-year development cycle. Four studios were charged with the task of this game at any given point, and it was originally set for release in 97, pushed back to 2001, and when it was done, we finally got it in 2011. And uh, when you're making a game, you have to have some integrity. And it, it could have been hard to cancel something you've been working on for so long, but that's exactly what they should have done with this game. It's going to go down as one of the worst games in history. And there you have it, my friends. Those are 10 games that were stuck in development hell, and they actually ended up sucking. If you want to see the opposite 10 games stuck in development hell that actually ended up good, let me know in the comments section. There's a playlist below with all the other top 10s that go up on the channel, and I'll see you guys on tomorrow's video.